Morning, Journey Church. Man, was that praise team rocking the house or what? Amen? Everybody rocking the house, then they say, you may be seated. <laughs> well, listen, you've got this in your bulletin. It says uh, you can ask the question about anything you want. You ought to see some of the questions we're already getting at. I can't believe some of y'all ask about sex. That is a topic. That Sunday, y'all not going to be able to bring the kids. Kids will have to stay outside. But you can ask about anything just, and then put it into the offering plate. And then, have you seen all the hobbies out there? Is that fantastic? Amen? I mean, just sign up for one. You're not going to be obligated to do anything. If you want to come to one meeting and meet people that have the same hobby, you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. I've seen food I want to eat. I've seen games I want to play. I mean, it's just fantastic. Amen? I mean, today, I am so excited. In the next three weeks, you could learn some insights that would so radically change your life that you could get through life with less pressure, less stress than you ever had in your life. In fact, it's even new to me. I've studied it for 40 years, for four decades, and I've missed it. You, you can learn things like uh, how to go from an awful day to an awesome day. You, you can learn how you can go from when you renew and rest uh, to fill in your best, and then you can let God simply do the rest. You can learn that you're fearfully made, you're wonderfully displayed, and God did the work, and you can just enjoy it. I mean, it, you can, when, when you're reading the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, and when God said, he made this, made this, and made this, and he said, and it is good, he was asked to say, man, isn't this wonderful? Isn't it a delight? Isn't it something to really be enjoyed, what I created, and he, that he wants us to enjoy it together? We're going to do a quick review, and then we'll get right into it. Last week, one of the things I said, it said in Mark chapter 22, 27, it said, and then he, Jesus, said that the Sabbath was made for man. Man, I've learned more about the Sabbath in the last three weeks than I have in the last 30. And not man for the Sabbath. In other words, it's a gift from God. And, and it's for our benefit. And he knew that we were going to need a time to rest, a time to renew. And the only way we can get to really rest and renewal is the one that's the Lord of the Sabbath, who is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And then we talked about how to learn to just kind of wait on the Lord. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. It doesn't matter if you're young or old. There's going to be a time that you need to renew and rest. Because, see, when you renew and when you rest, it helps you be at your best. Amen? And when you're at your best, you can then learn to allow God to do the rest. You renew and rest the correct way. You'll be at your best and you let God do the rest rest see when we don't renew and when we don't rest we're trying to do it and we don't do it best that's good because see you're out there trying to do it you're not resting you're not stopping you're just going 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 and it gets worse and worse and worse you're under so much pressure you're under so much stress you talk to somebody day and you say man i'm so busy i'm so stressed out i'm so worried hey he didn't create you that way he had the sabbath was for you and he is the lord of the sabbath he said i want you to renew i want you to rest but the day that wait upon the Lord, how do you wait? I wait. One of the ways I do it is I rest. One of the ways I rest is I sleep. When I, when I sleep, I say, God, I'm resting. You take care of the rest. While I'm resting, God, you, you, you heal me. You take care of me. You protect me. You provide for me. You renew me. You recharge me. Amen. One of the ways I rest is I pray. I take God's promise. I meditate on God's word, and I trust God. Because when I wait upon the Lord, he renew, he recharges me, renews their strength. See, when I get renewed and I rest, I become my best. And when you're at your best, you let God do the rest. See, most people think when they're at their best, they got to do it. That's not really true. You're really at your very best when you're letting God do the rest. You do your best and you let God do the rest. Amen? And then, yeah, so, so that's just what, what he said. He said, renew means to recharge. It means to be encouraged. It means to be strength. And then, then what? Then you shall mount up on wings like an eagle. Why? Because I've renewed and I've rested. I'm on my best. So now I mount up on wings like an eagle. I shall run. I shall not get weary. I shall walk and I shall faint. See, when I get mount up, when I've renewed and I'm rest, 
and I'm at my best, I mount up on wings like an eagle. I can now see things from a new perspective that I couldn't see before. Before, I was so I wasn't rested, so I was right in the midst of all the problems. Now I mount up like wings like an eagle. Now I see it, and I have new insights. Now I can see down, I can look down, I can now understand the best way to have the wisdom to handle the problems that I didn't have before. And so now it's like a new start. It's like a new beginning. So to wait, to wait, to focus on God's power, to focus on God's uh, promises and not the problems. And so then we went on and we said, yes, yeah, so we go from there, we go to Matthew 11, 28, and we said there's four words that you got to remember, and the first word is to come, come unto me. God said it's a command, whatever's going on in your life, especially if you have a problem, if you have a burden, God says, come to me. All who labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you what? Rest. Say rest. So the first two words, you come and you rest. Two words. Come and what? Rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn. What's the third word? Learn. So you come, you rest, and you learn. Why do you learn? For, for I'm meek and I'm lowly at heart, and you shall find rest upon your soul, your emotions, when you're all emotion, when you're all stressed out. Why? You take my yoke, and it's easy, and my burden is light. So we learned, we told you there's really four important words that you got to learn over and over, that you got to practice every single week. You come to God, you rest for God, and you learn from God, and your burden is light. Your burden doesn't necessarily go away, but now it's light. Man, if you didn't see last week's message, we had Joy and we had some people up here and she had a, a backpack and we filled it with bricks and you can try to carry it or you can get somebody to help you with it. And it was like, now we still have the same burden, but it's so much lighter. So you come, you rest, you learn, and you have a light burden. Now, we're going to get to the point that why is the Sabbath for man? Because God knew that we need it. See, the Sabbath is a day to be satisfied and sanctified. And we're going to get to Genesis chapter 2, verses uh, 1 through 3. And this is what's so exciting to me. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And all the host of them. God said, hey, I made the heavens, the earth. Earth, I made all the host. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested. On the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Let me ask y'all a question. Do y'all think God was tired? No. God does not get tired. He does not sleep. He does not slumber. He does not wear out. Well, then why did he rest? You ready? <laughs> the word rest means here he celebrated all that he created. This is so cool. God said, listen, man, I've been doing this. I've been creating the heavens. I've been creating the earth. I've been creating all the hosts. I did it for seven days. And then I'm going to rest. I'm going to sit back. And I'm going to say, man, I'm going to celebrate what I did. I'm going to say, man, this is a delight. This is a glory. This is wonderful. Man, when you see the heavens and the earth and everything is created, see, if you're not careful, you miss it. And you don't even say this is wonderful. You forget that God created it all. You just go right past it and you miss it all. And that God, he said, man, I stayed. And I celebrated it. Matter of fact, even when God was saying, it is good, he was saying, I separated the light and darkness. He said, it is good. God said, man, it is beautiful. It is wonderful. It is marvelous what I have done. See, God created the heavens and the earth, and he was so pleased. He celebrated it, and then he set it apart and for us to celebrate it with him. And he sanctified it, which means to set apart to be blessed. God said, hey, it is the Sabbath. They're set apart to celebrate with us. The Sabbath is a day of joy, delight, celebration, not rules, not regulation. I, I, you know what I really think we should call it? Sunday celebration. This is really what we should do on Sunday. We ought to have Sunday celebrations. Sunday should be the most exciting day of the week. You Sunday celebration. You come Sunday, you take in the word. Amen. And you come and delight in the word. Hey, I, I'm going to talk. Because when God said, he would say, I spoke, and it is good. Every time God spoke, he'd say, it is good. When he said, it is good, he said, man, this is wonderful. This is delight. I'm excited. So you come Sunday morning, and you hear the word, and you say, oh, it is good. Amen? Amen. And so then you take a little time, and you rest up a little bit. If you need it, I need it. <laughs> but, but then, are you ready? Then you start getting in awe, and I'll show you later. Then you're in awe at God's creation. See, you start saying, man, I can't believe that God created this, and you're just in awe in what he's done, and you begin to enjoy it. And part of 
the part of celebration is enjoying part of the creation. And you say, man, now, now I'm coming, I'm focusing, I'm resting, I'm celebration. And, and, and you close out all the stress and all the work. See, Sunday should be a Sunday celebration. One day of the week that we're not focusing on all the world, all the problems, all the stress. We're saying, man, instead we're enjoying God's word and we're enjoying God's creation. And we're going to do it in a new and exciting way. Amen. And if you would do that every single Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you'd get through it so much better. We've forgotten to do that. Sunday's just another day. We go just as fast on Sunday as we did the rest of the week, and we wonder why we're so stressed out. Sometimes God created it, and, and, and it should be something in a sense of awe and delight. You, you might see, listen, you can see the same thing. See the sky, the water, the sunset, the trees, the nature, a baby, a fish. But now it might, you might sit and say, oh, wonderful. It's a light. Even, even amazement the way God created it. Because you begin to see it through a different lens. A different lens. It, it's set apart. You enjoy his creation. It's from a different perspective than you v- view it. It, it. Today is God's day. I'm going to start looking through God's lens. It's God's glory. You have to take time. It's intentionality. It takes time. You, even if, look at this. I, if I'm looking, I have to look through this lens. I have to focus it. I have to look through it. I, I did that yesterday. I was thinking about how God's creation was. And, and I saw a bird. It's about 60 feet up in the air. Thank God I had my glasses on because the bird's only five and a half inches. And you, can you barely see him up there? And most of the time, I just drive by him. Well, most of the time, I wouldn't even see that sucker. In fact, I had to go get some glasses made where I could see him. I went with one time. Well, Shelby's not here, but he'll be back there if you want to do it. And I went with him one day, and he was saying, man, isn't that cool you see that bird? I don't see that bird. So I went to, I got some glasses now that I can wear when I go out and bird hunt, and I could, now I can see that bird only five and a half inches, 60, 70 feet in the air. But if I really wanted to see that bird, if I wanted to say, man, oh, I had to take this camera and I had to focus it. I hadn't just looked through it. I had to focus it and see it through a different lens. When I refocused it, I looked through a different lens. Now look at the bird. That's what I said. Everybody say, oh. Oh, I like that. <laughs> God wants to look through a different lens, and he wants to say, oh, that's God's creation. If you're not careful, you just drive right by there. You didn't even see the bird. You didn't even see the tree. And you missed the awe of God. See, God, he went the seventh day, and he rested. He went, oh, look what I created. Oh. Look what a delight that it is. Did you know, though, it took time and intentionality? Did you know uh, we had some company, so I got up before everybody else. They were still sleeping. They didn't have breakfast. And I said, by the time y'all get up, I'm going to go. And I went and found that one bird. <laughs> Thank God. And I got back, and I got to develop it. And I said, Thank you, God. There's an illustration for the allness of God. Did you know I wasn't worried at all about anything else in the world? Did you know that I was not anxious about anything? The, the, the Sabbath is a day that we could choose kind of just to hang out with God. It's like, it's like in the cool of the day, we refocus on things. Uh, as we, God, we celebrate the wonder and amazement that you've done. Uh, I got a, I'm a big kid at heart, and so I, Got rid of my other vehicles, and I got a, a red Bronco. The only about that, you can't hide very well. <laughs> so I got the red Bronco. I had never seen a red Bronco. Now that I got a red Bronco, I'm starting to say, there's another red Bronco. There's another red Bronco. I hope they get more red Broncos. You know why I want to see more red Broncos? Because then they don't know that's my red Bronco. <laughs> Especially when I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing in my red Bronco. No, I shouldn't do that. But it's so easy to miss things. I mean, uh, there's a picture. I want you to look at this picture. It's really a cool picture. And you see the girls just hanging out. Is that cool? But, you know, if you're not careful, if you don't focus on it like God would have you focus on things, we miss that. Can you squint and see the same picture? Does it look any different? Huh? Do you see the girls hanging out? 
If you're refocused, can you squint your eyes and see somebody else in the picture? Who do you see? Did you know that so many, so many times during the week you're just going so fast, all you see is the girls and you miss what Jesus is doing in your life? But when you see Jesus, you stop and go, ah. Oh. What if you slow down? Especially on Sunday. And you said, I'm going to quit worrying about the world. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to God's house and I'm going to take in God's word because when God spoke the word, he said, it is good. And that means you come to God's house. You say, oh, God, this is good. Then I'm going to rest. And then I'm going to refocus on God's creation. And I'm going to see it in a way that I've never seen it before. It will radically, so radically change your life, you don't have to worry. Don't worry today. Focus on Jesus. Adam had the awesome day with God, and he got to name the animals and, and uh, see the woman formed. He must have been something in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. It said, Out of the ground, the Lord God, he formed every beast of the field, every bird of the air, and he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam got to call each living creature, that was its name. That, that had to be cool. I mean, the, the Lord would create it, and the animal, and Adam would name it. So I looked up, about how many, how many, how many animals? One or two million? There's 8.7 million species. So I said, he couldn't have had that many different animals. Well, so maybe it's just types of animals. So he'd bring all these birds, and they'd say, okay, uh, those are going to be called birds. There's still thousands of those. But that still had to be super cool because unbelievable, you know, and an awesome day must have been together. They'd hang out with God together and, and that, you know, and every need would be met. And he'd bring the animal and Adam would name it. He'd bring another animal and Adam would name it. And, man, they just had this unbelievable time together. And Adam gave the name to all the cattle and to all the birds of the air and every beast of the field. Uh, but Adam, there was no one found to help compatible with him. I don't know how long this lasted, but this is what I think happened. This is James' version. <laughs> Y'all can ask Jesus. It's in James 8.8. 8. <laughs> this James 8.8, 8, not that book James 8.8. 8. <laughs> I, see, I think Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, I think every day, every day during the week, They'd get together, maybe it's in the cool of the day in the afternoon, and, and God would create animals and birds, and they'd bring them to Adam, and Adam would name them, and they'd do it the next day, the next day, the next day. And, and then Saturday, Sunday, the Sabbath, they'd get together, and they'd say, wow, oh, let's enjoy what we created, what we named. Wouldn't that be cool? Go all week, and you created things, and you name it, and, and then the Sabbath, you just enjoyed what you did, and they did again, did again, they did again. And I don't know how many weeks, I don't know how many months it took. I don't know. But, man, they were enjoying each other. And then finally God said, you know what, Adam, you need somebody else to enjoy time with. You need somebody else to be in awe with. You need somebody else, when we see all these animals, we see all these plants, we see all this creation, which is the most beautiful place in the world to be, and Jesus is here, and he's going to bring us back to that one day, and it's going to be this beautiful creation. We're going to have a new heaven, a new earth, and it's going to be all together to enjoy again. And he said, man, you need somebody else. And God said, hey, guess what? When you have a need in your life, even if you don't have it, I can create it for you. Woo! Huh? And so Adam had this need in his life. So God said, Good, guess what? I'm, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something for you. He said, uh, I'm going to make a difference in your life. And so Adam was hanging out and all these names and all these different birds. And I mean, I got to where I love birds. Now, it used to be I didn't know one bird from another. I didn't care. I didn't even see the birds. Now, now I have 90 different types of birds already. But I looked up this week. There's 10,000. 10,000. And what's, what's cool about the birds, what I'm learning, is it's, it's not the birds. It's, it's all these different shapes. It's all these different colors and and it used to be a bird was a bird was a bird was a bird you know and and now i'm saying man god you created so many different types so many different shapes so many different colors i mean who would believe that that, that look at that bird is that cool i mean look at the different colors in the birds i mean now i say man god that's not just a bird god that is cool man can you believe look at them that god said that's nothing to god and, and it is different types and different birds. And, man, I used to just thought, man, this is the coolest thing. I used to never even think about it. Now I now not, not only take love taking the picture of birds, I'm in awe at what God can do with the different colors and different shapes. I, I, can, I can go, I don't worship the bird. I worship the creator of the bird. 
what a difference it makes to go out and worship the Creator. And, and no, I, I don't go out and say, hey, since I go out and take pictures of birds, I don't need to come to church. I can tell you that's a bunch of bee, you know, whatever. <laughs> that was for bull. That wasn't BS like y'all thought I was going to say. But anyway, no, 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 no. Because you got you to go out. You got you to come in and get the word because God said it was the word. Every time I work the word, the word is so powerful. That's what changed life. That's what brought into creation. And then go out there. I can see that bird. That bird can't create anything. God created it. So you got to come inside and you take in the word. It, that's what changes lives. Amen. But Adam, he needed somebody else to celebrate with. So the Lord said, hey, guess what? I'll cause a sleep and fall upon Adam. And, you know, he slept and he took a, one of his ribs and he closed it up and the flesh in its place. And, man, and God, he's, God says a creative God. that He took the rib of, uh, which the Lord God had taken from man and he made it or shaped it into a woman and he brought her to the man. <laughs> this is really cool because not only did he bring her to man, Adam said he got to name it. This is bone of my bone, this flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman because she was taken from man. Do you think Adam, man, he said, God, it was really cool naming these animals. But this is the coolest thing you've ever done. I mean, man, I mean, he had to flip out. When she brought, he brought her, he shaped her. Don't you know that was something? For Adam to see a woman after he's always he's seen in birds and animals. I don't really think he said, this is bone of my bone. This is flesh of my flesh. I think that was the nicest thing they could put in the Bible. I, I think he said, oh, God, I knew you were God, but you did it now. Whoop, this is woman. God said, you need something, and I'm going to give you what you need. See, and I think at this point, they were getting to celebrate all creation together. They were getting to celebrate God together. They were getting to celebrate the creation together. They were getting to celebrate everything God had done together. But you know what? I believe there's things that people need, and God knows what you need. And that God can create something out of nothing. The scripture says, I'm making you the father of many nations. But he said, this is true of God and of Abraham, I believe. And God says, God who gives life to death, who creates something out of nothing. Another translation said, with a word, he makes something out of nothing. You see the power of his word? You see why you need to hear his word? Another translation said, I call existence into existence things that are not existent. God's so creative. And because we're created in the image of God, we should be, we have this unbelievable creative ability. Part of the creative ability was given to you and was given to me to dream. You should be dreaming. You should be excited. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter you're young and old. You'd be able to be able to creative and dream what God can do. You, you, you should, we serve a God that whatever need we have, he can create it. And when he gets through create it, we'll be in awe of what he created. We should be in awe of what he's already created. We, we, we should be in all, we, we, an, an awesome life, an awesome marriage, as long as God's the center of it. We're spending quality time with God. See, there's things you're missing in life or missing in your marriage, and, 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 and can, God can make something out of it. God can take a nothing marriage and make something out of it, and you'll just go, oh. God can take a nothing job and make something out of it, and then you'll look back and say, Oh, because God did it. God can take your life and you feel empty and loneliness, and God then gives you a purpose and meaning, and you have joy and awe. I mean, God can do that because he can take nothing and make something out of it. God can take a, a nobody and make them a somebody, and then you say, oh. See, I mean, that's the kind of God you have. We, we, we're part of an awesome creation, and God says, hey, I want you to be in awe. Matter of fact, God created you, and you're awesome. Look at what he said in Psalms 139, 14. He said, I'm going to praise you because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous, awesome are thy works, that thy soul knoweth you right. God said, man, when I made man and woman, I said, hey, hey, they are awesome. They're the ultimate awesome thing that I have made and I've created. That's me and you. When God said, he, when God looks down on you, he said, man, y'all are awesome. When we see each other, we all say, awesome. Look at the person next to you and say, man, you are awesome. 
I'll praise you because you're wonderfully made. You created me. Everything you did is marvelous. Man, that, that's, man, you're marvelous. You're awesome. When I look out, even when you're sleeping, you are awesome. I praise you because you're wonderfully made. And of this, I have no doubt. There's no doubt about it. No doubt. I praise you because I made you, yeah, listen to this, an amazing and wonderful way. What I've done is so wonderful. He said, I know it very well. You're part of God's delight and his joy. You're wonderful. You're marvelous. You're amazing. And you're part of God's glory. Anybody that thinks any different is wrong. You personally are part of that. When God looks down, he says, you're absolutely marvelous. You're wonderful. You're amazing. Uh, that's how you should feel about yourself. That's where you should get your self-worth. Not from what somebody else says, not from what you think, not from TV, not from Facebook, not from anything. You get it from God. I want you to leave today thinking, man, <laughs> the reason not some arrogant, macho thing, but you're wonderfully marvelous and amazing because God made you that way. To have this awesomeness in God, you're going to have to access Jesus Christ. But you also, to enjoy your time with God, it takes time. You're going to have to intentionally set apart time for you and God. To have this awesome time to enjoy God's creation. It, you got to be intentional about it. I had to intentionally take time, get my camera, go take the picture, refocus it. It just doesn't happen. I had to take time. I have to intentionally, every single morning, get up and spend time with God. It just doesn't happen. I, I work on my message every single day. Does it just happen? God's given you a creative ability that you can learn how to do things in different ways. How, you see how deeply involved God wants to be in your life. Did you see the picture of God and Adam and, and how they hey, were together? He'd create something and Adam would name it and... He brought him Eve to him, and he told the Roman that hey, there's a greatest need. If you can't find it, God will just create it for you. God wants to be creative, and he wants to be active in your life. But you've got to be intentional about it. Uh, he reminds each one of you, you're fearfully and wonderfully made, that you should even sometimes you just say, oh, this is awesome. Uh, you're not an awesome in the eyes of God. Sometimes you need to stop. If you're married, you understand the second greatest gift God ever gave a man is his wife. Sometimes you need to just say, this is an awesome marriage, an awesome wife. I have awesome kids. If I'm healthy, it's awesome. If I'm sick, he's the awesome healer. It's just the awesomeness of God. It, it'll have to be Intentional. I think it starts, you need to be intentionally at God's house and God's word every single day. And when you walk in, you need to say, it is good. I need it on Sundays, I think, and I don't do this. I'm saying what I need to be doing and what you need to be doing. You need to quit worrying about the rest of the world and the rest of the week. If you need to take a short time of rest, you need to do that. Then you need to intentionally find something that's in all that God's done. Uh... I, usually it's part of his creation, but it might be something right under your nose. It might be the sky, it might be the water, it might be the birds, it might be something, but it's something that you have been so busy you hadn't seen it. And you say, what I'm doing today is I'm refocusing just on the awesomeness of God. Not my work, not my worries, not my stress, not even my family problems today. All we're going to do is focus on the awesomeness of God. And then that will give you strength to get through the rest of the week. Again, it all starts with you can't even access the God unless you have Jesus Christ. So would you stand and let me give you the opportunity to access God where you can then access the creator of the whole world. And you can begin to enjoy life like you never have before. Just bow your heads and close your eyes and just ask God in your heart. God, I, I need to make sure I have Jesus as my Savior, my Lord. 
God, I need to make sure I have access to you. God, I can tell how involved you want to be in my life. I want you involved in my life. I mean, I see how you and Adam were together and how active you were. And I want you to be active in my life. And today, if you want Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you want to make sure that you're going to heaven, I'm just going to count the three. And when I do, all you do is simply raise your hand. It's that easy. It's the faith of a child. Say, hey, I want to invite Jesus Christ into my heart. One, two, three. Just raise your hand up in the air right now and say, hey, I'm ready to have Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Just stick your hand up in the air. Maybe you're here today and just like the Caleb who we baptized a while ago and maybe you're ready to follow through in baptism and that's where you're at. Whether you have to accept Christ as your Savior or maybe you want to follow through in baptism. If you want to follow through in baptism, just raise your hand up right now and they'll give you a package. We'll make arrangements. Might be next week. Might be today. I don't know. Just say, hey, I want to accept Christ. I want to follow through in baptism. Or maybe this is the church you know you want to be a part of. And uh, today's the day you made up your mind. Say, I'm, I'm ready to join Journey Church, and I want it to be today. And just stick your hand up there and say, hey, I want to follow through and, uh, and join Journey Church today. So whether it's accept Christ, follow through in baptism, or join Journey Church, just stick your hand up. Maybe you got a next step that you need to make. Uh, maybe it's to rededicate your life. Uh, I don't know. Everybody has a next step. And maybe you're ready to make that next step today. And you just want to say, hey, I want that next step card. And uh, just raise your hand right now. Whether accept Christ, follow through and baptism, join the church, or just have a next step you feel like God's calling you to make, just raise your hand right now. Father, I just thank you for your word. I think it is so powerful. I think it's so clear how you want to be involved in our lives and active in our lives. And God, I think it'd be great if we could come into your house excited and say, yes, God, it's just a joy and a delight when we come in, just hear your word and we take it in. As we go out today, God, that we rest, but then we, we become in awe about your creation and today's the day that we don't focus we don't worry we're not ang anxious we close out all the worries and anxieties of the world we focus on your power and your promises and God that alone brings rest now God maybe there's other things you need somebody to pray with you and pray for you man we got wonderful counselors downstairs and upstairs to be glad to pray with you and pray for you and if you feel like you need to pray with them just come down Father, I ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.